So here it is. The Most High said the only thing people should eat, that's all people, Ham, Shem, and Japheth was on, the, on Noah's Ark. It's supposed to eat our clean foods. That's it. No unclean food. That means even out of the waters, the only thing you are supposed to eat is what? You got it. Fish that has scales and fins. Period. That's it. Everything else is an abomination because what? It tells us in the Bible, the wages of sin is death. If you eat the poisons, you will die from the poisons. And the Most High is perfect in his creation. He made the pig and other abominable animals for their service outside of sacrifice or food for people. Read it. For, nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. You can't eat camel. He is unclean unto you. And that's another thing. Muslims don't eat, I mean, over there in the Middle East, the Arabs and Muslims, they don't eat uh, pork, but they eat camel back. They still eat shrimp, crab, lobster, and everything else out of the ground. Squid, everything. So they're still unclean. Abraham didn't deal with none of that stuff. The father of Ishmael. Come on. Jumping down to verse 7. And the swine. And the what? And the swine. And the swine. Though he divide the hoof. Though he divide the hoof, which means he have a split hoof. And a lot of us understood that growing up eating pig feet. And I'm not, the, I'm going to tell you right now, folks, I'm not judging no one on that matter. Because I remember coming home from dancing and all that up there on 16th and Burks. And we used to go to, to, a, to a guy, I was about 15, 14 years old, or go to a guy up the street who had a speakeasy. And <laughs> we would split up our money after dancing and go straight to the speakeasy. And pick out the pig feet that was floating in, in vinegar. We would sit there and be like, no, I want that one. So I'm not saying this to judge people because before we knew better, before the Most High gave us the truth, I ate pork. I remember looking at that floating foot. And, and guess what? It split the hoof like the Bible says. It. Though it has split hoof. Read. Though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He cheweth not the cud, which means what? It chew grass and all that's natural, and it regurgitates that up like with a second stomach to make it, it exactly. It cheweth the cud, all natural protein from the ground, from grass. Come on. He cheweth not the cud. He is unclean unto you. He is unclean to you. So the Bible made it clear, the law, that we were not supposed to actually eat swine. Read. It says, verse 8, Of their flesh shall ye not eat. You can't eat pork. And their carcass shall ye not touch. You can't even touch it after it's dead. Now hold up here. Read. They are unclean to you. It's unclean to you. That means it'll work contrary to the reason the Most High would have us consume meat. It would work contrary to that. Now, now what would the Magi or the sorceress of Babylon do knowing, knowing this law according to God? How did the Babylonians use pigs? Their priest. And this is going all the way into the pathology of those who operate in swine is what you'll learn today. Going into our academy, historical and archaeological proof. Folks, there must have been something way deeper behind why the Most High said don't eat pork than what's being taught on the surface. There must have been. 
What is there? What is that connection between pigs and demons that will go into people, attack and do battle? Fair use. Fair use. Fair use. Fair use. Hit that like button, folks. We got 24. We're about a thousand likes down. Please help us out. Hit that like button. Come on. I don't want help us out now. Fair use. Only on Fox, at this time of year, we hear how important hand washing is to prevent the spread of the cold and flu. Tonight, you'll learn how hand washing could prevent a scary brain condition. A valley mother of four is told that she has a brain tumor, but when doctors go in to remove it, they find something else, something living inside her brain. Rosemary Alvarez savors every minute with her kids. That was a good throw. Playing ball and laughing. <laughs> For this mom, each day with them is a gift after coming too close to death last August. I thought I had the flu. I started feeling tired. But within days, this soccer coach and PTA president knew it wasn't the flu. I started feeling numbness in my, my left arm, blurred vision. I'm still smiling for my kids, but now I can't get out of bed. Two trips to the ER solved nothing. Cat scan came back normal, no problem. Her you. husband, George, was scared. She couldn't eat. She could barely walk to the bathroom. So I knew at that point, you know, she was de deteriorating really quick. It all came to a head on the first day of school as their kids aged 9 through 17 headed back to the classroom. <laughs> their mom was in an ambulance headed to Barrow neurological hospital after an MRI explained those strange symptoms. They came back. You have a brain tumor. At that exact moment where my heart fell just completely all the way down. But the news would get worse. Neurosurgeon Dr. Peter Nakaji. Once we saw the MRI we realized this is not good. It's something down in her brain stem which is as deep into the the brain as you can be. George broke the news to the kids. Uh, it was a rough day because it was the first day of school and they came home with all their stuff from school and all the stuff to sign and look what I got from my teacher Fair and what's mom and what's mom. Well, mom's in the hospital and this is what happened. As Rosemary waited for surgery, she worried. Oh my god, we just canceled our insurance like three weeks ago and now this happens and m mostly where, how are we going to pay for this? What's and she prayed. Just, okay god, if you're going to take me, take me, but make sure my kids are good. By the time the surgery got underway, all those PTA moms and neighbors, her kids, they were all praying too. My girlfriend, she goes, everybody's calling saying they're praying for you, they're praying for you. Church, they're going to church and they're having the mass, pray for you. and pray. Power of prayer. That's what I told them. Power of prayer. It worked. Dr. Nakaji was expecting to find a brain tumor. He showed me the video as he operated on Rosemary's brain, carefully working, knowing this is the most dangerous spot in the human body to work next to, the brain stem. Here's the lump. And at this point, it still looks like a, a brain tumor. And so we're just opening up uh, into the inside. Of the and then the unexpected. No tumor, instead a worm. Watch as Dr. Nakaji grabs the worm and gently tugs it out of Rosemary's brain. It's still alive. You don't hear him on the tape, but Nakaji actually chuckles. Uh, which I'm sure is a very strange response for the people in the operating room, but because uh, I was so pleased to know that it wasn't going to be something terrible. This worm comes from eating undercooked pork, but more frighteningly, it can be spread by people who have the parasite in their bodies and don't wash their hands well. You see how they brushed over that? You see how they brushed over that, brothers and sisters, and made it seem as if it was about her not washing her hands? And then they, but they, they hit it. It was the pork. It was the pork in her brain, folks. Now, what effect neurologically and others was that having on this woman? 
See, the Most High is perfect in his law. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited.